All right, friends, here we go with chapter 18. Now, remember yesterday when I read, um, they were still with Prince Philip. And Jack and May kind of got in a fight and Jack was leaving because May was kind of just going to go off with Prince Philip. But then um, they kind of apologized to each other. The rising sun shone through Jack's eyelids, irritating him, just enough to wake him up. As he separated his nightmares from reality, he realized with a groan that far too many of the bad parts were actually happening. The rocky ground he'd slept on didn't really help things, but even sleeping on a bed of the softest linens wouldn't have kept dreams of a night in a blue cloak away. Jack stretched, then pushed himself to his feet, groaning again as he did. Everything was sore, but at least he wasn't waking up in a witch's house. He picked up his bag and started walking, suddenly regretting not taking any of Philip's food when he had the chance. After one night, his hunger had returned, and this time brought friends, some relatives, and even a few pets. As the sun rose higher in the sky, the forest began to come alive around him. Birds, both natural and magical, sang out their songs, each competing with its neighbor. Jack smiled at this, watching the regular birds futilely attempt to overwhelm their supernatural cousins. A few everyday birds gathered on a branch, trying to outsing one particular bird with silver wings and a golden head, its body as big as a crow's. The regular birds chirped away in a pretty, offbeat sort of rhythm, but they had nothing on the three-part harmony that emerged from the mouth of the silver and gold bird. As Jack walked, he stayed to the trail since he wasn't exactly sure where he was going. Apparently, this trail wasn't very well traveled, as the local animals and creatures didn't seem too afraid of humans. He thought he spotted a fox at one point, and another time he definitely saw a magical snake, shimmering like an underwater candle as it spiraled through the air just a few inches off the ground. Jack actually found himself enjoying the walk despite his mood. Unfortunately, soon enough, the clouds blocked the sun, causing the day to grow more and more overcast as the morning moved on. Gradually, the graying light threw the path into shadow, and the pleasant magical creatures around him began to take on a more sinister appearance. Red eyes that previously had been cute in the middle of fuzzy faces now glowed menacingly from the darkness, and Jack swore he heard a voice, tiny but clear, reciting something in a strange language. Soon, little droplets of rain fell, refreshing at first, but quickly turning into a drenching shower. The storm didn't help the dirt path much, muddying it up within minutes as the rain came down harder. All in all, the woods were getting pretty creepy as he drew closer to the black forest. The fact that he could have been well on his way home by now still bothered him, but when it came down to it, he just couldn't leave the princess to die on her own, and Philip hardly counted. No, this was all her fault, and Jack promised himself he'd tell her that over and over whenever he finally did catch up with them. He couldn't be too far behind, not when he'd only walked an hour last night before stopping to make camp, turning back toward the Black Forest at daybreak. It was pouring as he turned a corner and discovered he'd reached his destination. As it turned out, the Black Forest was, in fact, just about a day's travel from where the giant had fallen. Philip was right, as much as it annoyed Jack to admit it. There wasn't even any warning. One step, the path was just dark and depressing, but the next brought Jack to a sudden halt. The trees along the path be behind him had all been alive, even green in places. The trees of the Black Forest, though, were gruesomely dead, each and every one of them. This was no gradual change, either. It was as if an arbitrary line had been picked, and from that point on, there were only shivers and chills. Not a hint of green showed through, just dark and twisted wood. Despite the lack of leaves, the blackened trunks and the finger-like branches filled in all gaps, making the forest a huge ruin of impenetrability. And if light couldn't fight its way into the forest, it sure couldn't make it out either. As the rain poured over his face and spilled down his neck, Jack decided that he should get moving, if only to escape the storm. After all, the floor of the black forest looked as dry as a bone. Instead, he just stared at the entrance, his eyes wide as he started having trouble breathing. After a few minutes of this, Jack blinked. This was ridiculous. It was only a bunch of dead trees. What was there to be afraid of? Some rumors with no proof to them? Centering his entire will on his foot, he forced himself to take a step forward. Though his legs shook, he finally managed to do it. That was it, one step at a time. But still, why was this so hard? They were just trees. Did one of them just move? Jack's blood ran cold as his foot paused in mid-step, suspended in the air. Suddenly, he realized that he was sweating despite the chilly rain. The stories of the place could not be true. 
Common Sense said that if no one made it out alive, then there couldn't be any stories. Who would tell them? So the stories had to be just rumors. Sure, the forest was ugly and intimidating, but that was it. After all, an entire forest couldn't be cursed. Despite his logic, Jack's foot didn't move, still hanging in midair. Though, though the day had been warm back along the trail, now Jack shivered all the way to his toes. The sun from earlier in the day seemed miles away now, like it had abandoned this part of the world, never to come back. Finally, Jack's foot came down in the wrong direction. He took a step backward, then another. Inwardly, he yelled in frustration. He had to, he had to beat this. Even if the forest was haunted, cursed, and everything else, even if the forest made it, made it rain and blocked it out the sunlight, even if the trees all moved and killed anything that was stupid enough to go in, even if all that, the princess and Philip were in there, they must be, or Jack would have passed them on the trail. If May could go in, then Jack could, simple as that. And yet, he still couldn't move. And then he heard something from deep within the forest, a voice, a girl screaming, May. Without a thought, Jack yanked his sword out of its scabbard and took off at a dead run right into the heart of the Black Forest, the sword's glow lighting his way. Whew, I wonder if he'll find May or if it was just a trick. We'll have to find out tomorrow when we read chapter 19. Bye.